there's a pretty one, Ulysses. There it is. Hello, Booktube. I'm Sean the Book Miniac. Welcome back to my channel. Here I am with a review of my top read of 2018 so far, Women Talking by Miriam Taves, just published a few weeks ago in the UK and Canada. Sadly, won't be released in America till next spring, which is a crying shame. I think you Americans shouldn't wait that long and should get it from other sources. This is an absolutely amazing novel. I've been a fan of Miriam Taves, especially since I read her last novel, All My Puny Sorrows. It was my one of my top reads of 2016. Miriam Taves is an ex Mennonite Canadian novelist, and she writes pretty much exclusively about ex Mennonite female women. A Complicated Kindness, All My Puny Sorrows, and now This Women Talking. Those are the ones I've read. Like most faiths, there is a liberal wing and there is a fundamentalist, very deeply traditional conservative wing, and Miriam Taves came out of the latter side of the spectrum. D deeply misogynistic, patriarchal side of the religion. The Mennonites I know in my personal life come from the uh, modern, liberal side, so these books are not about those Mennonites, so let's be clear. So there were so many reasons why I was nervous about this book, despite loving Miriam Taves in general. I don't like reading books about religion. It makes me sick. Didn't make me sick here. I don't like books based on some kind of a socio-political theme without fully realized characters. Hence my early bail of Meg Wolitzer's The Female Persuasion. I don't like books that show women as being powerless and weak, hence my deep hatred, lifelong, number one hated book of my reading life, Charlotte Wood's The Natural Way. None of that was at issue here. And I should say this was a buddy read with Britta Bowler, and Britta Bowler and I agree deeply on this and deeply disagree about the last two books that I mentioned. So. Let's get that out there. I don't like novel. I don't like my fiction to be based on true events. I always get stuck, w pulled out of the narrative, wondering, is this true? Did this really happen? I, and it's hard for me to really enter the fictional narrative. That was not an issue here. So putting those aside, this is based on a true story. So let me talk for just a minute about the true story. The r radically fundamentalist se Mennonite sect Decades ago, they left Manitoba and went to Bolivia and started this remote Mennonite colony. And in the early 2000s, almost the entire female population of the colony, dozens and dozens of women aged toddler to grandmother, would wake up feeling woozy and as if they had been raped. When they talked to the leaders of the colony, they were told that it was all in their head, Satan was punishing them, maybe they had psychological problems. Eventually, the perpetrators were caught. They had been using an animal anesthetic. They'd sprayed it in through the window, which knocked out not only the women, but their husbands beside them and their children, so that they could have their way with the women. And they did it repeatedly, repeatedly. Four-year-old girls, 75-year-old grandmothers, and they were finally caught. So that's true. That's enough about the true story. Let's move into the novel. This novel is narrated by a man, August. He and his family, decades earlier, had been excommunicated from the colony, and he had received a university education in the UK. So he is fluent in English, and he was allowed to return more recently to the colony. The women who speak the Mennonite language, Plautdeutsch, which has no written component, ask August to take the minutes of their meeting. The purpose of the meeting is to decide what to do. They have a narrow window of time when the men are away to make a plan, and they are discussing three options. One, do nothing. Two, stay and fight. Three, leave. And because they are illiterate, August draws them a picture of each option. 
One, do nothing. Two, stay and fight. Three, leave. So what this novel is, is a set of minutes, lush minutes, taken by August, where he's translating the women's Plautdeutsch discussions into written English and adding his own flourishes and adding little things about the difficulty of translation and having his own reaction to what they're saying and his own uh, foibles, which ends up being just a really rich way to tell a very sad story. I should say at this point that I've heard from one of my subscribers, a, f a fellow booktuber that who did this on audio, that for him, the male audio narrator prevented him from fully experiencing the women's voices. So maybe audio's not the way to go. I can kind of see that. Whereas reading it, the voices of these women leap off the page. So that was not an issue at all. In fact, the exact opposite. It was just so beautifully, brilliantly done. So, no spoilers. That's all I'm going to say about the story. I loved it. It was... The, the characters were just so wonderfully drawn, and I will never forget them. And the story was so wrenching and, at times, hilarious. Trademark, vintage... Miriam Taves, the way she inserts kind of a gallows humor into her tragic fiction in a way that's just a delight. And a sense of claustrophobia, being in that attic, but claustrophobic in a way that's birthing a possible new world for these women. And I will just say one more thing, which I don't think is a spoiler, that at one point one of the men comes up into the loft and you just feel the change in the space. I will say that the penultimate chapter was weak, and I was worried the novel was going to go off the rails at the end. I felt there was so much unnecessary detail that wasn't advancing the story forward in that penultimate chapter, which detracted from my enjoyment. However, that was a temporary glitch, and the ending was extremely powerful. But yes, in a novel that's only 216 pages, it could have been that a little bit shorter because there was extraneous stuff that kind of sapped the narrative of its energy for a few pages. That would be my one criticism. I thought about feminism, I thought about gender separatism, Me Too, all of that stuff. Miriam Taves has been working on this novel since long before the Me Too. It wasn't inspired by Me Too, it was inspired by the true story. But what a what a novel. I absolutely loved it, and I think you will too. Thanks for watching.